Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. And in today's video I'm going to show you how to make this beautiful gatefold folio style, which is my favorite folio style number four. So there are also folio styles one, two, three um, available on my YouTube channel. You can find a couple of videos on projects I've made with these other styles. So I would definitely recommend to also check them out. But in this tutorial, as I said, uh, we will be making folio style number four. And you can find the cutting guides and templates for this folio style in my Etsy store. So um, on the cutting guides you will find all the measurements for the different elements you would need to build this um, folio as well as some templates of the elements which makes it really easy to um, build this folio on your own even if you are just starting with making mini albums of folios. Um, it's super beginner friendly. You have um, the images and then and all the um, elements are labeled and you can just go ahead and look at the templates which are mostly um, true to size templates so you can actually see where to cut your um, elements and where to score them. So these are just examples of a different cutting guide uh, which you can see right now. So that's just to give you an idea how I design my cutting guides and my templates and why it is so helpful to work with those um, PDF files um, along with this YouTube um, tutorial. And by the time you are watching this video, the cutting guides might already be available for different album sizes. So um, in this tutorial, I'm going to make this folio style in the size six by eight inches. However, if you have chosen a different album size and um, have bought different cutting guides and templates, then you're totally fine to use this um, tutorial along with it. Just make sure that you stick to the measurements um, on the cutting guide you have purchased. And that's also the reason why I'm no longer going to actually mention the measurements um, in this video tutorial because I really want this tutorial to apply to different album sizes and I think it just works the best when you are getting the cutting guides and then you start by using the cutting guide and the measurements um, to cut down your elements first, make sure that you label them and then you can just start with this video to um, follow the instructions on how build the pieces you have cut and scored together. So this also keeps my tutorials a little bit shorter and easier to work with. And I also think that my cutting guides for the different folio styles are super affordable and I'm pretty sure that you will be using them over and over again for making um, this folio style for different um, occasions and themes. So I have already used this folio style for a travel themed album, for a friendship themed album which I gave to a friend for her birthday and then also um, for a school album which I'm super excited to share with you as well. So you might already find a video of it um, in, uh, on my YouTube channel. And what I also like about having those cutting guides is that you can just print them out and maybe keep them in a folder and then um, you can go back to them every time you want to make this folio style and you will probably only need to uh, watch the tutorial for the first times you are making this folio and then you're probably good with only using the cutting guide um, with the measurements and everything but um, if you want to go back to the tutorial you can just um, scan the QR code on the cutting guide. So I have a cutting, uh, QR code on the bottom of each cutting guide and this brings you directly to this video tutorial so that you can go back and watch um, those parts you are struggling with when building this album. And I have actually divided this tutorial in three bigger parts. So first we are going to make the um, cover of the folio, then we are making the sides of the gatefold, so the insides but only the left and the right side. And the last big part is all about the big box which is included in the middle of the folio. 
Okay, so now let's just start with the tutorial. And as I said, we are starting with the uh, cover of the folio. So go ahead and cut down all your cardstock, your chipboard and um, pen and paper. Um, you would need to build the cover um, according to the measurements on the cutting guide you have purchased. And again, I would recommend you to label them so that it's easier for you to um, yeah, find the correct elements when following this, the instructions in this tutorial. And then we can continue with the first step to build the cover for this folio style. And for this, we need um, the cardstock elements E and F, and then also the chipboard elements A to C. And then you need to place tape on the cardstock element E on the right side. So um, I actually like using tape, but if you want to use a strong glue instead, make sure that you draw a line first uh, with a pencil and a ruler just half of an inch from the right side, so from the right edge of cardstock element E. And after attaching the tape, um, you can continue by removing the tape backing and then you want to attach cardstock element F on top of cardstock element E, so just uh, where you have placed your tape before. And to make sure that it sticks down really well, I like to use my large bone folder and just burnish it down. For the next step, I like using this tool, which um, comes in a tool set by Craftelier Basics, and I will make sure to uh, link the um, tool set in the description box down below, as it's a really great tool set and it makes um, making an album or folio cover so easy. So as you can see, I use this first tool and I place it in the left uh, bottom corner um, of the cardstock, and then I get my chipboard element A, I use some wet glue and then I press down chip at element A onto the cardstock and um, with using wet glue you're still able to move it a little bit around before um, it sticks down completely. So that's helpful so you can still align the tool and the chipboard um, once it's like placed onto the cardstock. But if you're doing it without the tool set, I would just recommend to um, get a pencil again and a ruler and then you want to have a border around the chipboard of um, three quarters of an inch. And then once you have found the correct position to place your chipboard in, you can go ahead and burnish it down. Again, I like using this um, large bone folder for this. Then I'm getting the second tool of the toolkit and this is this um, T-shaped ruler or tool and I just place it right next to the first chipboard element we have already attached and then I grab chipboard element B, I use some wet glue again and I just um, attach it right next to the tool set and I also like using the first tool again to make sure that there is still um, a border on the bottom of three quarters of an inch. So you can still move it around a little bit and make sure that you have attached it straight um, with an even border and then again get your bone folder to burnish it down really well. Now I like exchanging the second tool with a third tool, um, which is just a space holder. So um, this is especially helpful when you're using a wet glue, which um, takes a little bit of time to really dry. So this makes sure that you're not moving the second chipboard element when you're placing the third one. So the third chipboard element is um, chipboard element C. Again, I use my wet glue and then the T-shaped um, tool. Um, as a space holder in between and then I just attach it to the cardstock again. And after burnishing down um, chipboard element C, you can continue by adding the next chipboard element, which is chipboard element B. So um, the second chipboard element B actually. And um, again, make sure that you exchange your tools and then get a chipboard element B, use your wet glue and um, just stick it down onto the cardstock right next to the T-shaped tool and make again sure that you have an even border um, of three quarters of an inch and burnish it down. 
And this brings us to the last shipboard element we want to attach onto the cardstock construction. And this is the second shipboard element A. So again, place some wet glue and just stick it down. After attaching the last shipboard element um, and burnishing it down, you can remove the tools and then I like to turn around my construction, um, get my large bone folder again and also burnish it down from the other side. Now for the next step you want to get your three quarters of an inch tape and just place it around the um, shipboard construction, so on the cardstock border. And I like to place the tape from one edge of the cardstock to the other edge. So um, even though we are going to cut off the corners in a minute, um, I want to make sure that there is enough tape even in the corners. And you will see why in a second as well. And I actually just run out of tape here. So that's why I had to grab, uh, grab a different kind of tape. And for wrapping your cover, which we are doing right now, you don't really need the strongest tape. So I find the score tape to be a little bit stronger than the Craftily Basics tape, but you're totally fine with using the Craftily Basics tape uh, for wrapping your album cover. And then again, you want to make sure to burnish it down so that the tape sticks really well. And then the next step is to actually pre-fold your cardstock. So you want to fold up the cardstock border and I make sure that I just burnish it um, against the chipper edges. So as you can see, I like to stand it up and then I just give it a very good um, burnish on all the edges. And for cutting the corners, um, I like using the next tool out of the tool set. So again, I can highly, highly recommend um, you getting this tool set. It's just great. Um, and I use my pencil here to mark the corners and then I get my large scissors to actually cut off the corners. You can also do that without the tool set. You just want to cut at an angle. But if you do so, make sure that you leave a little bit of space um, in between the corner of the chipboard and the cardstock um, yeah you cut a uh, corners you cut off so you want to have a little bit of space here to wrap the corners nicely I then continue with removing the tape backing from the bottom of the construction. I like to always start with the longer sides. So I start with this side and then I just uh, fold it by folding the middle first and holding it down. You want to be careful here that um, you actually use your bone folder at the same time to burnish it from the middle but then upwards so um, yeah that your cardstock is really sticking um, and actually folding right over the shipboard. So that's why pre-folding is very important so I would not skip the previous step. Um, and then again get your bone folder and burnish it down again uh, from the middle to the outside. And then I like to turn around my construction and I do exactly the same for the opposite border. So again, I remove the tape backing. I start by folding up the middle and you see me here actually pre-folding it again before sticking it down. Um, and then I use my bone folder to burnish down the cardstock from the inside to the outside. Now we can continue with the shorter sides, but here you have to be careful because um, you don't want to immediately unstick down the cardstock border, but instead remove the tape backing first and then get your bone folder or you might be um, using another tool to tuck in the corners a little. So as you can see, I just use my bone folder here and I just like I don't know, I just tuck it in from the sides. This is a little bit trickier. It doesn't always get perfect. Um, but yeah, it doesn't have to be perfectly tucked in. Um, but then, as you can see, once you um, actually stick down the cardstock border, it leaves you with nice edges and not, uh, not edges, uh, corners, and not like these pointy corners you would usually get if you're not tucking it in first. 
And that's also why you want to have enough tape um, on the corners uh, because this makes it so much easier to tuck in the corners and actually stick those little like corners um, onto the tape so it really stays in place. Now for the next step we need um, cardstock element G and then shipboard element D. So um, get those pieces and then again um, get some wet glue and you want to attach shipboard element D onto cardstock element G. And for this I again like using this um, first tool I showed you from the tool set um, and I want to make sure that I have an even border around the chipboard element I placed down. Now just like we did with the um, album cover you want to place your three quarters of an inch tape around um, the chipboard so onto the cardstock border and then I also get my tool for the corners. I mark them down and then I use my large scissors to cut off those corners. And then again I pre-fold the cardstock border by actually folding it up and burnish them um, around the chipboard edges and then I go ahead remove the tape backing from the opposite sides first and um, stick it down onto the chipboard and then just as I did before with the um, album cover I tuck in the corners and then I also stuck down the um, other two sides of the border. Now you need all the pattern papers which you have already cut down to size according to the cutting guide um, and I want to start by attaching the first pattern paper A onto um, chipboard element A. So for this I like using um, 3 eighths of an inch tape and I place it on the sides of the back of um, pattern paper A. And then I also place some um, wet glue in the middle of uh, pattern paper A and this makes it very easy to align the pattern paper perfectly onto um, the cover or onto the shipboard here. So um, this gives you the possibility with the wet glue to still move it around a little. So as you can see I haven't um, removed the tape backing yet. So I stick it down first um, with the wet glue and I find the correct position so that I have an even border around the pattern paper and once I have found the right position I then go ahead and just lift up the pattern paper a little bit and uh, remove the tape backing from the um, tape I have attached to the sides. And then again I burnish down so that it sticks really well and you actually just want to attach um, pattern paper A to the left side of the gatefold and you don't want to attach the second um, pattern paper A to the right side yet. Because before you attach um, the pattern paper to the second um, gatefold chipboard element, you actually want to finish up your um, magnet closure. And for this, you would need chipboard element D, which you have already wrapped in cardstock. And then, as you can see, I have also attached the pattern paper to the front of this element as well. So I actually didn't only use pattern paper, which you can totally do, but I also also made this um, window frame with all the embellishment from the collection I'm using which I love making but this will not be part of this tutorial. I make sure that there will be a different tutorial on how to make those window frames as well. And I'm sorry that I actually didn't include how I added the like pattern paper onto um, chipboard element D. So that's actually now a good time to do that for you. So um, get your pattern paper D and just place it on the front of chipboard element D which you have already wrapped with cardstock. And then you want to turn around your chipboard element D. And I like um, using a white tape here. I actually use this um, score tape in the size um, two inches and 
and I just place it um, like on one side of chipboard element D. So first I actually found the middle of chipboard element D and marked it down and that's where I want to um, place my tape at. And because this piece is going to be the closure which you will um, pull up to open up the gatefold, um, you want to make sure that you use a very strong tape here. Um, you might also want to add some extra glue onto the tape, which I didn't do. Um, but yeah, you want to have this um, stick very well to the gatefold. Once you have placed and burnished down your tape onto the chippered element, you can get your magnets. And I actually like using uh, four large and very strong magnets. So, and mine are also self-adhesive, which makes it very easy to apply them. But if you don't have self-adhesive magnets, you can just um, place some tape on the back of the magnets. So as you can see, I have the magnets in two pairs, so there is um, there are two magnets attached to each other and then I remove the tape backing from uh, one magnet each and I just stick it down onto the um, chipboard element and onto the side uh, which is not covered with tape yet. And I need to mention here that I actually should have added um, my magnets a little more to the edge, so to the cardstock border. So I added them like in the middle of the half of chipboard element D, but they should be added more to the sides. So um, yeah, I later on had to actually place a third magnet to have it close properly. So yeah, when you add your magnets, please make sure that you add them um, not all the way to the border, you don't want to do that but add them um, maybe right next to the um, cardstock border so still on the chipboard but next to the cardstock border now we can attach pattern paper G to cover up the magnets as well as the chipboard um, but before you want to make sure that you no longer have your second pair of magnets um, magnetized to the already attached pair so you just want to have those two magnets attached here um, before you actually um, cover it up with the pattern paper um, and then for attaching the pattern paper I again like using my 3 8 of an inch tape to place it on the sides of the pattern paper and then I also use some wet glue um, on the middle of the pattern paper and I don't actually remove my tape yet but I attach the pattern paper with the red glue um, right onto the chipboard and make sure that there's an even border around and once I have it in the right position I go ahead and remove the tape backing from the tape and then also as you can see here I like using my bone folder to burnish around the magnets and have them being shown if you don't like that, you can um, just burnish like the pattern paper on the side so where the tape is placed and don't burnish it in the middle. Um, I think that would work as well. It also depends on how thick your magnets are. So mine are a little thicker um, and I actually don't mind having them being shown like this. So that's why I decided to burnish around them so that yeah you can still see them but um, if you don't like that I would just try to burnish them on the side uh, to burnish the pattern paper on the sides and now we can attach um, shepherd element D onto the gatefold um, cover and for this I remove the tape backing I make sure that I stick it to the right side so you want to attach it to the gatefold side which has already um, some pattern paper attached to it make sure that it's in the right orientation as well and then I yeah just go ahead and remove the tape backing and press down my album cover onto the tape on chipboard element D and as you can see you just want to be careful that you align it straight so right next to the um, edge of the pattern paper or where you have marked on um, the middle of chipboard element D and yeah press it down also burnish it down really well 
Now we want to attach our second pair of magnets of course um, onto the second gatefold side and for this I like to have a like flat surface underneath the gatefold so um, I actually grabbed some um, things here to place underneath so I used a box and a tape but you could use anything to make it um, like a flat surface under the gatefold sides as you have not um, finished the inside of the folio yet um, and then you place your magnets onto the magnets you have already attached and then you remove the tape backing and you carefully close up your gatefold um, um, and you make sure that your gatefold is actually straight so that the um, two sides are perfectly um, aligned next to each other and then you press it down so that the um, self-adhesive magnets will just stick perfectly to the other side of the gatefold. Once those magnets are attached, you of course also want to cover up the second gatefold side uh, with pattern paper A. And again, I use my 3 8 of an inch tape here. I just place it to the side or, uh, sides of pattern paper A. And then I use some glue um, on the middle. And again, I first only um, attach it by like using the glue and then once I have found the right position I also remove the tape backing from the tape on the sides and then I just burnish it down. And then we also want to add some pattern papers to the back of the uh, folio cover as well as to the sides of the cover. So for this I just use some wet glue and place it on the back of those pattern papers. So I start with pattern paper C here and I actually like to um, lay the album cover flat on my table and then I can add the um, pattern papers to the back and the sides and burnish them down and in between I like to make sure that I have an even border around them so I actually close up the uh, folio cover just so that I can see if it's really attached straight. And now that's it for the uh, folio cover and we can continue with the next big part which is working on the insides of the folio. Um, so working on the left and the right side with the waterfall element attached to them. And the first step for this part is again to cut down to size all the pattern paper and cardstock according to the measurements on the cutting guide you have purchased. And um, then you also want to actually score the cardstock when scoring is required. And again, for this, you will also find all the information you need on how to score the different elements and where to score them um, onto the cutting guides and um, templates. So, yeah, just go ahead and um, prepare your cardstock elements and then you can continue with the next step, um, which is the first step on how to build um, those elements together for the inside of the folio. So after cutting and scoring all your elements, you first need um, cardstock element C. And cardstock element C, um, you want to attach to the inside of the album cover by using some wider tape. So I again, I use my two inch tape here um, and then I also use my half of an inch tape and I just make sure that I cover up the back side of um, those cardstock element C completely with tape because um, you want this to stick very well onto your chipboard. And then I just removed the tape backing from the first cardstock element C completely and this is actually going to be attached to um, chipboard element B mainly but then also the sides um, are still attached to um, chipboard element A and C. So you want to make sure that you really attach it in the middle of cardstock element um, B. So um, yeah. Uh, you can actually just eyeball it. So it's a little trickier to attach this piece to be honest but um, I like to just hold it above and then I eyeball like um, the space I want to have which is one eighth of an inch on the bottom and the top and also so that it's um, like 
an even amount of the cardstock attached to um, those chipboard elements um, A and C. And then of course you want to do the same with the second cardstock element C which is attached to um, chipboard element B as well. Um, so again remove the tape backing, hold it um, over the chipboard construction to eyeball where you want to stuck it down and then carefully stuck it down and try to have it as um, even as possible and make sure that you place it in the middle so that the cardstock is also attached to um, chipboard element C and A. And once you have attached um, both of your cardstock elements you want to make sure that you burnish it down really well. So I again use my large bone folder for this and you actually also want to um, uh, use your bone folder to slide it carefully up and down um, in between those chipboard elements so in this like crease you have uh, between those chipboard elements so where you left um, some space um, and again so just slide it down carefully up and down you want to use some pressure but you don't want to like poke a hole with it um, in those creases so be careful and then uh, while sliding it up and down you actually just press um, and fold up your chipboard um, like to it so um, press it against it yeah and you can repeat this step so the sliding up and down and pressing the chipboard carefully against the bone folder um, until your um, album cover is folding nicely and easily now we want to prepare the waterfall pages for the left and the right inside of this folio and for this we first need all our cardstock elements B and as you can see I use my 3 8 of an inch tape here to place it um, right next to the scoring line. So make sure that you don't actually cover up the scoring lines but you just place it right next to the scoring line and you want to place the tape on the side where you did your scoring at. So you don't want to turn around your cardstock after scoring but just place it on the top and again by also labeling the cardstock elements right after cutting them um, you can make sure that you still know that this is the top side of the cardstock. And then we also need to attach tape um, to cardstock elements D as well. So again just place your tape right next to the scoring line on the little flap we have created. And then I like to make sure that I cut off the excess of the tape um, from all those cardstock elements. So for this I like to turn around my cardstock elements and I use a small scissors to um, actually cut off the excess um, when there is some. And you don't want to cut off the corners here of the cardstock. So um, for some elements, and you have probably seen it in my previous videos, you want to do that. You want to um, cut the corners at an angle. But for these elements, it's important that you don't do that and you leave the cardstock um, edges straight. And then after placing um, the tape on all of those cardstock elements B and um, D, we can continue by attaching um, the cardstock elements B onto the first cardstock element A to build the first waterfall. And for this I just grab one of cardstock element B and I actually fold down the little flap we have created where we placed our tape on and now you actually want to turn around your cardstock element B and then fold up the flap. And then to attach it I actually remove just half of the tape backing from one side and then I hold up the sticky side and I use the non-sticky side to align my cardstock element B perfectly with the edge of cardstock element A before I go ahead and remove the rest of the tape backing and press it down. After attaching the first cardstock element B you can just flip it to the side and then get your second cardstock element B. Again uh, fold up the flap on the back side, burnish it down and then remove just half of the tape backing 
and hold up a sticky side to align the side of cardstock element B with the side of cardstock element A and then um, the top of cardstock element B you want to attach right next to the flap of the first cardstock element B which you have already attached. So you don't want to um, attach it on top of it but right next to this little flap. And then you continue those steps to attach all the other six cardstock elements B onto this first cardstock element A to build your first waterfall page style. Now for cardstock element D you actually want to fold the little flap differently to cardstock elements B so you want to fold it up on the side where you place your tape on. And then without removing the tape backing yet, I just go ahead and I um, um, fold it over the bottom of the waterfall page and I make sure that my cardstock element D is in the middle of my waterfall page. And once I have it in the right position, and again, I like to just eyeball it. You could use a ruler here to find the middle first, but I think it's not really necessary. So I eyeball it, and once I have it in the position I want it to be in, I just hold it in place um, very firmly, and then I turn around my uh, waterfall construction, and I carefully remove the tape backing and stick it down. Now before I continue with the next step I just want to add here that you might want to change it a little um, what I'm doing now uh, because uh, you might want to add your pen and paper D onto cardstock element D on the front of cardstock element D first before actually adding cardstock element E um, in the next step. So I didn't do that here. It is still fine. I can still add my pen and paper later but it would have been a little bit easier to add the pen and papers first. Now we need cardstock elements E and um, as you can see I used a scallop frame die cut here for this element so it's actually not cut to the size um, you will find on the cutting guide so on the cutting guide it says a different size which you could use if you don't want it to be any shape or frame but um, then it says you can also use like any shape or frame die cut um, which would fit on here of course. So for attaching our cardstock element E, I like to use some strong tape and then I just yeah, took some pieces of tape and placed it on top of um, cardstock element D. Now it's time to add the magnet to this magnet closure and again I use some self-adhesive magnets here so um, I have a pair of magnets, I remove the tape backing from one of the magnets and then I just stick it down onto my cardstock elements D and E. And once you have attached the first magnet you can go ahead and remove the tape backing from the second magnet which you would have um, on top of the first one, um, just magnetized to it. And then you can go ahead and close up this um, closure and make sure that you close it straight, do it carefully and hold down your waterfall page because at this point the waterfall um, pages might not lay flat because they're not attached to anything. So hold it flat and then carefully um, flip up the um, magnet closure and stick the other magnet down. And then that's it for the construction of the first waterfall page and now you would of course just go ahead and do exactly the same steps um, for the second waterfall page. And when I add the last cardstock element, which is cardstock element E, I just make sure that it's in the um, right position. So I like to just lay it right next to the first waterfall page and then I again just eyeball it and place my cardstock element E um, onto cardstock element D. Now that you have finished up the bases for both waterfall pages, you of course want to continue by adding pattern papers to them. And I like to start with the pen and papers B which are supposed to be attached on the cardstock elements B um, and I actually before I glue them down I always want to um, lay them out first so this way I can see if that's really the way I want them to be arranged um, and I usually go with um, 
plain cardstock like um, solid cardstock uh, with the same colors as the collection I don't really like to use so much patterns on my waterfall pages um, only on the top page is where I would use some pattern paper um, so yeah I just lay them down and then you can open up the waterfall and you have all your um, pattern papers um, in the like right position so you can just start and I like to start um, on the bottom page and then I use some wet glue to attach the pattern paper onto the cardstock and I always want to make sure that um, especially on the bottom so that's the bottom you would see when the waterfall is closed um, that there is like an even border or like the same border on each um, of those waterfall pages so that's where I want this to be aligned perfectly. And now we also want to attach pen and papers to cardstock element E and D. And as you can see here, I am still able to slide my pen and paper D a little bit underneath cardstock element E. Um, but if you did um, use a different shape of cardstock element E or you actually um, glued it down completely um, to the edge of it um, onto cardstock element D, uh, you might not be able to do that. So then you would just go ahead and trim down your pen and paper um, D a little bit here for the front side. And for attaching I again only use some wet glue here. And then I also attach my pen and paper D for the back side of cardstock element D um, again by only using some wet glue. And after burnishing it down I then get my second cardstock element E and I just attach it um, on the back of the first cardstock element E. But um, because there is a magnet attached here, I want this to stick very well. Um, so I use some tape on the sides of cardstock element E here. And then I just peel off the tape backing and I make sure that I just um, attach it perfectly aligned to the first cardstock element E. And then for pattern paper E, I have chosen this um, yeah, little journaling card which says Joy. And um, again, I use some wet glue to attach it onto cardstock element E. And I actually didn't add any pattern paper to the back side of cardstock element E. But you could of course do that if you prefer this. But I thought it still looked fine like this. And then we need to repeat all the previous steps for the second uh, waterfall page. So again, um, start by adding your pattern papers B onto cardstock elements B first and then add the pattern papers to cardstock element E and D. Now that we have finished both our uh, waterfall elements, we can continue by adding them to the inside of the folio cover. And for this, I like using a strong tape, which I place um, along the border of the cardstock on the back side. And then I again want to make sure that it sticks down really well. So I use my large bone folder to burnish it down. And for attaching them straight, I actually use the same like method. Um, so I also use some wet glue on the middle of the back side of this waterfall page. And then I go ahead and I don't remove the tape back yet, but I just attach it um, with the wet glue and make sure that it's straight. And then I can continue by removing the tape backing. And to remove the tape backing, I actually used my tweezers here, which makes it a little bit easier to grab it um, from underneath this construction. And then of course we do the same for the second uh, waterfall element. So again, I use wet glue and tape on the sides and then I use my tweezers to remove the tape backing once I have it already attached with the wet glue in the right position. And then the last step for the second part of the tutorial for the inside of the folio um, is to also attach pattern paper C. And for pattern paper C I only use some wet glue and you of course want to make sure that it's attached um, right in between the folds on the creases. So the folds where you fold up your album cover you of course don't want to cover it up. Um, so yeah. 
just attach those pattern papers and then we can continue with the next part which is making the box pocket for the um, middle of the folio. And again, before we start with um, actually constructing our box for the next part, um, you want to prepare all your cardstock and shipboard elements by cutting them down to size according to the cutting guide. And then for the first step, we would need our cardstock elements F and G. And then again, just as we did for the folio cover, you want to place some half of an inch tape on the right side of cardstock element F. And then you can continue by attaching cardstock element G on top of it. So um, use the tape to attach cardstock element G exactly um, half of an inch from the um, edge of cardstock element F. And then we can start with adding the first chipboard element, which is chipboard element A, onto cardstock element um, F and G. And for this, we use some red glue and um, just add it to the back of the chipboard. And then again, I like using this L shaped ruler, which comes in the set from Craftily Basics. Um, and I just add it to the left side and make sure that there is an even border of three quarters of an inch around it. And once I have it in the correct position, um, I go ahead and use my bone folder to burnish it down. But then for the um, space holder um, between chipboard element A and chipboard element B we want to attach next. I'm actually not using a tool out of the tool set but instead I made my own um, tool or guide by attaching two um, pieces of chipboard. So the same chipboard you are using for the chipboard elements in this uh, for this box. So I added them back to back and um, use this as a guide in between so that it's the width of of two times the width of the chipboard. And the width of my chipboard is actually one millimeter, so um, that's what I like using for this box. So you don't need a very um, thick chipboard, but um, yeah, you could definitely use different chipboard. But whatever chipboard you are using, make sure that you build your own tool and you can just use some scraps for it um, and just attach them back to back um, so that you have your tool um, in your stash and you could use it for the next album as well. And then I just hold it in between those two chipboard elements and I attach chipboard element B by again using wet glue and as you can see I also like to slide my um, guide I have made up and down to make sure that there is this space in between um, all the way up and down. And then I'm using the same guide for adding um, chipboard element C and I again use wet glue, place it on the back side of chipboard element C and then I attach it and I also grab my L-shaped ruler again to make sure that it's attached straight and there is an even border of three quarters of an inch around it. And then before you attach the next chipboard element, you want to grab another guide uh, which I have made and this is actually just the width of um, one chipboard um, piece. So yeah, I just got uh, just took another scrap and I just wrote guide on it so that I can keep it in my stash. And this is one, uh, one millimeter thick, so the same as my chipboard. And again, I like to make sure that I um, slide it up and down and have this um, space in between. So you want to have one millimeter in between if you're using one millimeter thick chipboard. And then um, you use the same guide for the last chipboard element, which is chipboard element um, A. And um, again, I attach it by using wet glue and I make sure that there's an even border. And you always want to make sure after attaching each of those um, chipboard elements that you burnish them down really well because you no longer have um, your space holder in between so you don't want them to move around when adding the next chipboard piece. After attaching all chipboard elements uh, we can continue by adding some three quarter of an inch tape um, on this cardstock border around the chipboard elements um, and I just place it all the way from one side to the other side um, as I have explained for the um, album cover before and um, as you can see I really like using this metal ruler to whip the tape um, perfectly from the tape roll. 
And with the measurements um, for the cardstock we have used here, you might want to now trim down um, the cardstock on the right side a little bit because of course um, this depends on what size of chipboard, like what um, thickness of chipboard you are using. And then for the next step we want to mark the corners and again I like using this tool out of the tool set but if you're not using um, this tool you can totally do that um, by just cutting the corners at an angle. Um, just make sure that you have some space between the corners of the chipboard and the edge of the cardstock. And after marking the corners you can continue by cutting them off and then as you can see I also grabbed my large bone folder to burnish down the tape um, along the border uh, really well so that it sticks down very well. And then I also like to pre-fold um, this cardstock border by actually um, folding it up and then using my bone folder to burnish it um, against the chipboard from the side. So I like to stand it up for this, use my bone folder and press it like really hard to um, fold it up and have it pre-fold before actually attaching it down. And then you can continue by removing the tape backing from one side and I always like to start with the longer sides. So remove the tape backing and then start to fold it um, up uh, on top of the chipboard and I always start with the middle first. So I fold it on the middle um, and then I hold it in place and use my bone folder to burnish it from the middle um, to the outside. And I then um, do the same for the opposite side, so the other long side. Um, again, I remove the tape backing, I fold it up in the middle and then I hold it down to burnish down um, the rest of the cardstock border from the inside to the outside. Now before we continue to also wrap the shorter sides, um, you want to remove the tape backing and then again you want to tuck in those little corners. So for this I like using a bone folder and I just like press against the corners from the side so that it's tucked in and then you can go ahead and actually um, attach the cardstock border onto the chipboard. And then for the next step, which is building the sides uh, for the pocket box, uh, we would actually need um, cardstock elements H and then chipboard elements E. And the first step is to attach the chipboard onto the cardstock. And I just eyeball it and place it uh, somewhat in the middle. You could use your L-shaped ruler here, but I don't think it's necessary. It doesn't have to be perfect um, and super clean. And then I just add some tape to the shorter sides of this cardstock border and then you can go ahead and grab your scissors. And then use your scissors and you actually want to create those little flaps by um, cutting at an angle and um, yeah, as you can see I just eyeball it and um, cut around it. Again it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, make sure that you don't cut um, all the way up to the chipboard uh, corners um, but you just want to have a little bit of um, space in between the corners and the cardstock and then you can continue by um, actually removing the tape backing from the shorter sides and stick the cardstock onto the chipboard here. Then you can continue by folding up the um, cardstock on the longer sides and um, use your bone folder to burnish it down against the chipboard edges. And then we need to um, turn around those uh, two constructions and get some wider tape and you want to make sure that you use a very strong tape here. Um, and you just want to place this tape, again I'm using 3 quarters of an inch tape and I place it right next to those um, scoring line we created when folding up the cardstock. And after placing the tape, um, I like to make sure that I cut off the excess um, of the tape hanging from the edges of the cardstock if um, there is some. Um, so for this I of course use my scissors and then um, you're actually done with the sides of the box, uh, box pocket and you can just set it aside as we don't need it right now. 
And before I attach the pattern paper, I like to pre-fold um, the box construction by again using my large bold folder and slide it up and down in between um, all those chipboard elements, so where you want to fold your box. Um, so I slide it up and down and I um, actually press the chipboard pieces against my bone folder while sliding it. And then um, once it folds up perfectly, you can continue by adding your pen and papers. And at this point, you want to keep in mind that the left side, so where you have chipboard elements A and B, is actually um, the top of the pocket, so the um, flap closure for the pocket. And then the right side with um, chipboard elements D and A, that's where you have the bottom of your pocket. So um, that's what you want to keep in mind to attach the pattern papers. So I chose this um, grid or plate pattern paper for the top of the pocket, so I have it on the left side and then I have chosen um, the like um, pink pattern paper for the bottom of the pocket. And I also decided to decorate the corners of the pattern paper a little bit so I used my corner punching tool here um, but this is of course optional so that's just what I like to do and I just punch the corners on the top of the pocket and then the bottom of the pocket and that's where I will later add some islands to it. And once I have punched the corners, I just use some wet glue to actually attach the pattern papers on the top and the bottom of the pocket. And when attaching these pattern papers, I like to also close up the um, pocket box so that I can see that I have an even border around the pattern papers. But then for burnishing it down, it makes sense to turn it around and lay it flat on your surface to um, use your bone folder and burnish it down really well. Next we can attach our um, closure which is an elastic closure and you would need a white eyelet and a very small eyelet for this. Then of course you also need um, an elastic string as well as an eyelet setting tool and I like to use my Big Bite by We Are Memory Keepers here. And the first step would be to actually mark the middle and what I like to do is I use my Tim Holtz ruler, I find the middle and then I mark it um, at one half of an inch from the edge for the um, bottom of the pocket and then only one inch from the edge of the um, chipboard for the top of the pocket but um, that's just how I like to do it. You can definitely change it up if you prefer your eyelids um, to be higher or lower. And then you can start by punching the holes and for the bottom of the pocket, so for the large eyelet, you would need to punch a regular um, hole and then for the top of the pocket, for the small eyelet, you would need to punch a very small hole. Now you can start by attaching the white eyelet and here you want to be careful because you don't want to attach this eyelet all the way um, into the um, chipboard but instead you just want to press your eyelet setting tool very slightly so that you still have some space um, between the chipboard and the top of the eyelet so that's where you want to wrap around your elastic later so make sure that you don't press it in too much and then I cover up the back of the eyelet by using a piece of tape so this way the eyelet is no longer loose but it's staying in place and you can wrap your elastic perfectly around the eyelet. And as I said before I'm using one millimeter thick chipboard but if you're using thicker chipboard it might be difficult to attach the eyelet like this. So just one quick a tip here what you could do is you can get a bread and just place it um, into the eyelet and then you would just fold down the ends of the bread instead. So you don't use your eyelet setting tool and set the eyelet but you actually secure it in place by using the bread and folding down the ends of the bread. Okay so now we can um, set the tiny eyelet and um, make sure that you have the right settings on your eyelet setting tool before setting this eyelet and then this eyelet can just be set um, regularly so you set it in completely you don't have to um, attach it loosely. And then for the elastic I just fold it down in the middle and uh, with the measurements where I placed my eyelids in um, I find that I would need to tie a knot at the length of approximately 2 inches. 
But as you would just tie one simple knot, um, so a loose knot, um, you would still be able to pull on the string if that's not the correct measurements to have your um, pocket close well. So just pull through the elastic from the inside of the album cover to the outside uh, through the tiny eyelet and then you can um, just close it up and make sure that, it, um, that the elastic has the right length and if not you can still pull on the elastic to have it a little bit tighter and then I like to uh, secure it in place by using two pieces of tape which I place right next to the eyelet and then I just stuck down down my um, elastic string on top of it and then I also use a third piece of tape to actually cover up the eyelet and the elastic string um, on the top. And then we can add the sides to the box and for this I just like to um, get the sides and I just place it in the right position first and you can actually use um, the the middle of the back of the box um, as a guideline so that's where you have your both cardstock elements attached to each other and this gives you the perfect guideline um, for where to attach the side on the bottom of the box so um, use this as a guideline but also make sure that the um, bottom of the box folds perfectly over the sides so that's what I do first and um, if that works I just hold down the bottom of the side onto the chipboard and I hold it um, in place and then I remove the tape backing from the top of the um, side piece and I just carefully fold up the um, bottom of the box up onto the sides if that makes sense. And then after attaching you of course want to make sure that it's burnished down really well. So I open up the um, construction of the box, I get my large bone filler and I burnish it down. And then I like to turn around my construction and get the second side piece and attach it exactly the same. So again, first you want to make sure that it's in the right position, so don't remove your tape backing yet. Um, align it to the middle of the back of the box and then make sure that it's um, easily folding over it. So, and then once you have it in the right position, remove your tape backing and carefully um, fold up your um, bottom of the box to actually attach it to this side piece. And again, you want to use your large bone folder to burnish it down really well. And then you can remove the tape backing from the other side of the side piece and carefully again um, fold up your bottom of the box and stick the side piece down to the chippet. And then after attaching both sides of the box um, to the back of the box, I make sure that I burnish it down by just sliding in my bone folder into the um, pocket or into the box and um, press it down. Now we need to cover up the inside of the box by using pattern paper and before you want to place a lot of tape um, onto the chipboard element B and next to it. So I use this 2 inch white tape and I place the first one um, to the middle of chipboard element B and then right next to it I place a second piece of tape and you want to make sure that you don't place it all the way on um, to the um, border of this chipboard construction because um, you have pattern paper um, which is slightly smaller and you still want to have a nice border around it. And then we also need to add some tape to the back side of the pattern paper and I like using this half of an inch tape, you could also use 3 eighths of an inch tape and I just place it um, all along the edge on the top and then on the sides but not all the way to the bottom and then I also use some wet glue which I place on the bottom of the pattern paper and then I don't remove the tape backing yet but I slide 
my um, pad and paper into the box and I just attach it on the bottom where I placed on the wet glue. I also use my bone folder here and burnish it down really well. Um, you might want to wait a couple of seconds until your um, glue dried and then you can just lift it up and it's attached to the bottom yet so it stays in place. Um, remove the tape backing from the sides and then you want to be careful um, when sticking it down because you want to um, burnish it from the bottom all the way up so that you have no like um, air or creases um, in between and then for the last step I remove the tape from the top of the pattern paper and again I give it a good burnish. And then once you have your pattern paper attached, you want to get your large bone folder again to um, slide it up and down in between those um, chippered pieces so that your um, like top of the box is still folding nicely over the box. So again, um, use your bone folder, slide it up and down while pressing the chippered pieces against the bone folder and just repeat this step until it folds nicely and you can close up the box without any um, problems. So that's what the pocket looks like now and as you can see I also added this chipboard snowflake to the bottom eyelet but I actually ended up not using this pocket uh, for the album and attaching it to the album because I had the idea of making the box look like um, a gift. So I did another box and I added some ribbon to it which um, would make it look like a wrapped present or a gift and um, then uh, to add the box to the album you would need to add some tape to the back side of the box and I actually like to use a very strong tape here. I place it all around um, the, the edges of the box and then I also place two pieces to the middle and I also add some glue so I want this to stick very well. And then I, again, I just eyeball it so it can get a little tricky. Um, please be careful that you don't accidentally um, cover the um, creases in between the chippered elements so that the box would no longer close up. You really want to make sure that the box is um, perfectly uh, placed in between those um, sides of the chippered. And now that's it for this tutorial for my favorite folio style number four. Now what I didn't include in this tutorial is um, what you could actually place into the box. So um, as you can see it's a very deep box and it's so fun because you can include so many different things um, in this folio. So of course you could keep it very simple and just um, place a bunch of photos inside this box. But if you know me and my channel, you know that I really love all those interactive elements and there are actually so many ideas of what you could put inside this box. Like you could add um, photo mats here as well as journaling tags, but then you can also add photo booklets and journals with different types of closure to make it really fun and interactive. And with these different elements you could place inside the box and that's actually what I love the most about this folio style. You would be able to use up a lot of scraps and also stickers and embellishments that are coming in a collection which you might not end up using in other projects. So I will probably use this folio style every time when I have already done a 6x6 inch interactive mini album or an 8x8 inch interactive mini album because those always leave me with a lot of scraps and then also I have so many stickers and embellishments which I still want to use. And with the box I also think that this folio style just makes the perfect gift because you can add so many like different um, little surprises or presents inside the box as well. So of course there will be a different video or actually more than one video on all the different ideas I have in mind uh, for like add-ons to place inside the box. 
And as I said, these ideas will be all about um, photo mats, photo tags, photo booklets and pockets and then also about all the different closure types you could um, add to those elements to make them very fun and interactive. So just keep an eye out for my next video which will be uploaded very soon. And that's it for this video and I really hope that you enjoyed watching it, that you like this folio as much as I love it and that you could actually follow my instructions in the tutorial. Um, I try to keep it simple but if you still have some questions please um, feel free to leave a comment down below. And I actually always love to see your creations. So if you're using this tutorial and make a folio like this, um, I would love to see it. So don't forget to tag me if you're sharing it on any like social media platform. Thank you so much for watching and then I would love to see you in my next video. Bye!